Hello everyone, this is Simon TV. A, a while ago, I heard this crazy story about people with drug addictions and mental health issues being force medicalized in Canada. Apparently, according to the story I heard, people in those sorts of situations were being um, injected with psychiatric drugs against their will it just it sounded uh it just sounded unbelievable like a conspiracy theory but as i dug into it i discovered that it is largely true and one of the people i spoke with uh is dr anna Silvestrovich in victoria in canada who joins me now good afternoon good doctor good afternoon simon thank you for having me well, it's a real pleasure. Um, before we begin, I, I understand that you're a, a general uh, practitioner, but your professional experience is actually rather, rather broader than that. Can you can you tell us a little bit about your medical training? So I graduated from medicine at University of Manitoba in 1991, and I finished an anesthesiology residency in 1996 at University of British Columbia. I went on to do a trauma fellowship and I advanced my career until I was a, a full clinical assistant professor in anesthesiology, pharmacology and therapeutics at UBC and clinical assistant professor in anesthesiology, pain and perioperative medicine at Island Health. I resigned in 2020. So by 2022, when they wanted to fire me, it was a little too late because I had resigned and I now run my own clinic called Dr. Anna. Oh, all right. Um, why why were they wanting to sack you from your role? Because I had called out publicly. I made the mistake of actually naming people. I now have learned through with legal advice. I had proper legal advice. You never want to name people. You do not want to disparage people. And you certainly don't want to be a whistleblower because that can put you in very hot water very quickly. And Canada has no whistleblower protection, unlike the United States. And I was going to stop, but every time I asked another question, it just got more unbelievable. And so now three years into this investigation, um, it's very troubling as to what is going on in Canada and just how corrupt the pharmaceutical companies are in their very aggressive marketing using all sorts of uh, methods directly to the prescribers um, going through um, meta advertising library going through uh, marketing agencies like agence unique out of quebec and um, offering virtual medical education and you the doctors that are drowning in paperwork and quite exhausted don't have time to research and you generally trust the experts. Well, it turns out that experts can be paid $750 an hour to spread a pharma-funded marketing narrative. I understand. So the, the headline for our audience is, is the story that I heard true, that there are people uh, who are, are, are suffering from mental health issues and who are drug addicts who, against their wills, are being force-injected with... with um, these sorts of uh, psychiatric drugs? That is correct. In British Columbia, we have a unique piece of legislation called the Mental Health Act. In fact, we have three pieces of legislation, the Infants Act, the Mental Health Act, and the Adult Guardianship Act, where when a person is deemed to not be able to uh, make a decision for themselves, whether that be cognitive decline or whether that be um, mental illness so capacity then the providers make the decisions on their behalf and once a child is um, over 18 parents cannot advocate and if a child is under 18 parents are often not involved in the care of that child so to give you an example um, a young boy can be prescribed a large dose of prozac commit suicide and the father doesn't even know that he was prescribed this drug. That's outrageous. Uh, how many how many people are are subject to this regime of being uh, declared unfit and having medical practitioners force the sorts of treatment 
upon them. So I did the numbers backwards. What has been happening is they have been using long-acting depot antipsychotic injections, specifically Otsuka's Abilify Maintainer and Janssen's Invega. And they spent $50 million on these injections. And each one of these injections is $600 a month, if it's truly not the generic, but the trade name antipsychotic. So it works out to approximately 12,000 people that were injected in 2022. I know for a fact that almost 5,000 were injected with Abilify Maintaina. And Otsuka is the company that I have researched for the last three years and how they were trying to get this drug to the market, not just for schizophrenia, but for mood disorders. And of course, now it's being used for the very broad label of psychosis. In British Columbia, we have a massive drug addiction issue. And so many people are presenting as psychotic because they're drug addicts going through withdrawal. They can also be young children or youth that are smoking pot and having um, marijuana related psychosis. And admissions to the hospital and encounters with emergency rooms because of marijuana linked psychosis have gone up sevenfold, according to the Canadian Medical Association, since 2016. In 2016, um, marijuana was legalized by our government, and um, that was Justin Trudeau. And by 2017, we had a change of government here in British Columbia. So we have the um, National Democratic Party, New, New Democratic Party, NDP. And we just, it's been a series of decisions that have happened that have led us to where we are. And I understand. So. Mm -hmm. So it's it's sounding to me like um, a lot of people are just being lumped in as, oh, OK, you've got some sort of uh, psychological issue. We're not going to diagnose you too um, specifically. We're just going to put you into this broad group and you are going to be given these drugs. You mentioned the term uh, that the trade name, which is Abilify Maintainer, which is which is uh, Arapeprazole, I believe. Now, yes. in this part of the world, ar ar uh is prescribed by a general practitioner, but never uh, subcutaneously. Um, it's never injected. It's only ever a pill. But it's sounding to me like uh, it is the case, if you could please confirm, that this is being injected into people. That is correct. So in 2021, Otsuka decided to market a convenient injection. This convenient injection, you could enroll patients by calling a 1-833-EXP-CONN number. And you enrolled them into this program called the Panorama Program, at which point they would receive a depot injection of antipsychotic into two spots, plus oral injection, plus oral dosing of 20 milligrams orally for 14 days, I believe. And it was an initiation to to the drug. And the problem is also in British Columbia that as we've expanded the scope of practice of nurse practitioners and pharmacists, as of November 2022, nurse practitioners can diagnose and detain people and they can diagnose and inject these drugs and prescribe them. And the same goes for the pharmacies. So this is an awful lot of people that have been injected. and. That's outrageous. So it, here there is very, very strict controls. And I, I ran this particular issue past a couple of psychiatrists in New Zealand that I I know. And they said that the, the way that the legal regime works in New Zealand, uh, for a, a person to be forcibly medicated requires a, second, a secondary opinion from another qualified individual, meaning uh, an, a, a fellow psychiatrist or at least uh, uh, another physician. But you're telling me that in your province, uh, nurse practitioners and pharmacists can make these diagnoses and can forcibly inject, they can administer this to patients uh, uh, without any ref reference to any other individual. Do I, do I have that right? You, to some degree, uh, yes and no. So pharmacists are allowed to inject vaccines and antipsychotics as of November 2022. 
Nurse practitioners have the ability to detain for 48 hours and diagnose. They can, they can continue these injections. Usually there's a psychiatrist involved, but in the case of one of our cities, Port Alberni, there's only one psychiatrist for the entire city. So it's impossible for this person to monitor the volume of people that are being injected. And Abilify Maintaina in those doses is extremely problematic because in anesthesia, there's something called dose dependence. So drugs at low doses can act very differently than drugs at intermediate and high doses. So if you're injecting a massive dose of aripiprazole, what can happen is it has initially sedating effects, and then when it peaks, it can have dopamine agonist effects because it's a dopamine and a serotonin agonist. And that accounts for a lot of unpredictable behavior. The FDA has issued warnings about compulsive behavior, compulsive um, eating, hypersexuality, compulsive gambling, anger issues. So you can imagine that if there are 1,000 American hospitals on the hospital free trials program for Abilify, and they are using this for something like PTSD and veterans, and they have access to guns, for example, what could happen? I mean, so what we're seeing now in British Columbia, specifically in my health authority, the Vancouver Island Health Authority, is a lot of unpredictable behavior because now you have drug addiction injected with a depot that's in the muscle for four to five months because the half-life is 50 days, the potential for adverse reaction, pharmacogenetic differences in drug metabolism, lethal interactions with alcohol and other toxic drugs that they may be, have compulsive behavior and want to use um, is significant. Wow, that is just, it's astonishing. It just sounds like a recipe for social disaster to have liberalized uh, um, uh, drug administration to that degree and not have the checks and balances that one would expect. And are, are, is, are you seeing the social consequences of the, no, the widespread 100%. use? I think, you know, our colleague who has more experience front line on the streets, but we're really seeing this. And the police are telling me that now what they're seeing is not just drug addiction, homelessness and poverty, but they're seeing really unpredictable, crazy behavior because that is what's happening. And I think too, we've, we've made some mistakes along the way. So with, with legalizing marijuana and then the safe supply in order to get rid of um, you know, illicit substance, but we had a safe supply for drug addiction. Then we added unlimited Narcan in order to resuscitate people, but they go through this terrible, terrible withdrawal and they want to use even more drugs. And then now we have nurses that have expanded scope of practice and they can inject people with antipsychotics. It's just been a recipe for uh, disaster. For disaster being exacerbated by the widespread uh, prescription of this. Now tell me, if, if a patient decides that they do not want this drug, what is the process for forcibly administering it? What, what happens to that person? They're at home, they've decided they don't want to take this, they don't want to be injected, uh, with aripiprazole, what happens? So the way the legislation works is that they can detain you for the 30 days, the first 30 days, and usually people will get injected in that 30 days with a depot and discharged or discharged immediately after 72 hours from an encounter with a mental health team. And so then they're in the community and then every 30 days they're supposed to get an injection. And they can be certified for six months at a time. And then after that, I think in invariably for much longer periods, but so for six months, they have to have six injections. And if they refuse the caseworker or the psychiatrist that's attending, we have a limited number of them. So it's usually a caseworker. The police will get a notification. It's called a form 21 and they have to arrest these people, like the story that I presented to you, Kirsten's story that's been published, um, and they arrest them and bring them to the hospital during the pandemic lockdowns that happened in the parking lot. They were forcibly injected and sent on their way. Wow. And one of our local news stations, Czech TV News, even covered patient dumping at the bus stop. 
So injected, dumped, and sometimes with the um, uh, government housing, the P, uh, the um, it's called Portland Hotel Society. They have to report to the hospital, and they will sometimes get an extra twenty bucks for showing up. Wow! So the police are going to people's homes, people who don't want to take this drug, arresting them and taking them to nurse practitioners who can hold them for up to 30 days and are forcibly injecting them. That's correct. Th this is just outrageous. How could something like that happen in a liberal democracy? So that's why it's been very difficult to um, stay quiet. It appears that it has only happened in two health authorities, Vancouver Island Health Authority and Fraser Health, which is Surrey. And when I asked the police, um, are they told anything about why they're arresting them? Their answer was, no, they're just doing their job. It's called a Form 21. That's, well, it is astonishing. Has there been any uh, political discussion about this from perhaps opposition parties raising the alarm about whether or not this ought to be uh, public policy? So it's very surprising because we're in the middle of um, an election in British Columbia and two parties, the Conservative Party and the New National Democratic Party, NDP, New Democratic Party, they both feel that we should have more involuntary detentions because of the chaos that's happening on our streets because of drug addiction. Now, the problem with this whole involuntary detention is that we don't have the infrastructure nor do we have the manpower. And so we, as in British Columbia, already have the highest rates of involuntary um, detention of people under the Mental Health Act. I think there was something like 30,000 last year. And all that happens are these forced antipsychotic injections of drugs that are not helping. In fact, Abilify Maintainer is making the situation 100 times worse. Okay, got it. Well, all right. So uh, what about, is this an issue that the community is aware of? Are they aware that their their fundamental human rights are being infringed in this manner and that it is exacerbating the social problems of drug addiction that Canada is, is, is experiencing? So most experts in addiction say involuntary is the wrong way to go, that it has to be voluntary. And even our voluntary services are at the moment overwhelmed we don't have the capacity to treat addiction we don't have the beds and we're not doing it so why are we expanding involuntary all that means is we will be paying more money to the drug companies and to these act teams these teams in the community that go around and can inject people with these drugs and um, it's a problem because it's a pharma marketing funded agenda and there is a non-profit that um, I'm not going to mention their name because they've threatened me legally, but they're very much in BC wanting more forced involuntary injections. In fact, their CEO has stated that one in 30 people in British Columbia has psychosis. So what is the agenda? The agenda is to use more antipsychotics. And how do you ensure compliance? You inject it. One of those, one of the uh, pharmaceutical companies which is pushing these drugs is uh, is Atsuka, I believe, who advertises heavily uh, with Meta, the company that owns Facebook. And I understand that uh, until recently, until you started speaking about this issue, you had something like 35,000 followers on Instagram. But then you started speaking out about this. What, what happened then? So my entire Instagram account has been shut down. They, it said that I received a legal request to shut down my account and that my um, content did not meet community guidelines. And my content in the last days before the shutdown included heavy criticism of Meta Advertising Library, specifically Otsuka, Pharmaceutical companies purchase entire domain names like asthma.com. They Otsuka presents itself on Facebook under um, an organization called the Society of Valued Minds. And 
as of August 2024, they started very aggressively marketing to kids. They were they had campaigns um, to caregivers and to children, and of course, all their advertising is antipsychotics. They want your information, they want your IP address, and they want to keep bombarding you with ads for Rexulti, Rexaprazole, and Abilify. Wow, that's astonishing. So. Uh, okay, so that is that shows collusion between the pharmaceutical companies uh, with social media companies, at least uh, um, Meta slash Facebook, Instagram, yeah, I, and I, efforts. I really do, yeah, I do believe um, Musk on X is very well aware of what's going on. I, they don't. One company, Lily, was advertising on X, but generally pharmaceuticals are not advertising on Twitter. But um, the, they certainly are on the meta advertising platforms. And a long time ago, it was Allergan started this. Allergan started collecting patient data um, for cosmetic injections in 2008. And then it started. The Canadian Consortium of Early Intervention and Psychosis started collecting patient data. So we're collecting data. Data is very valuable. And um, social media is pretty dangerous because people are not suspecting that this is actually a, you know, pharma advertising to us. I get it. And um, they're, they're, they're also suppressing voices who are raising the alarms uh, about this, both medically and in terms of um, the social impact that these things can have. One would think, given the, the worldwide experience throughout the pandemic, that um, these organizations uh, would be a little bit less uh, forward in their approach to doing these things. It seems to me to be just just blatant. It seems to be completely out of control. There's a professor in Canada, Dr. Joel Lexchen, has written extensively on the topic about doctors in denial. And it appears that there's always a small minority at the very top, the 2%, that will do anything to spread a pharma marketing narrative. And that is exactly what's happening. And of course, they're educating all the others using technology. So Agence Unique is one of these marketing companies in Quebec that grew um, exponentially during the pandemic with Pfizer and Atsuka dollars. And so they had they hired experts and people would log on, whether it's pharmacists, nurses, whoever, and get the you know get all the latest information and it seems just so convenient um to have an injection for mental health doesn't it but there's you know mental health is such a diverse um group of symptoms and and to to it's very naive to think that we can have an injection and that's going to solve everything and see you later without monitoring anything no ekg no lab work nothing and kirsten's story that was published in capital daily that i shared with you is is completely shocking and you know she was tortured she's been tortured for years now she's off the injections but now they insist on oral error Eripoprazole, which I'm not sure she's taking, but then they say if she doesn't take it, they will take her daughter away. Her daughter's 13. So when the ministry gets involved, we have big problems sometimes with, um, I always find when there's just a little bit of knowledge about a topic and a lot of power and incentives, pharmaceutical incentives, whether that be free product or a $3,000 honorarium for enrolling someone into a program, um, the moral compass is flexible and, and ethics are flexible. Well, we've certainly seen that uh, over the last few years. Well, listen, I, I, this is such a broad topic, and I, I think that I'm, I'm very much going to have to dig into this with you again and i i i would like to invite you to uh, participate in a simon tv live uh, so that we can talk about this issue and provide the the audience with the opportunity to ask you questions and engage if you would like to do that it would be wonderful to have you i'd be honored to do that and i think we mentioned the 5th my my day would be the 5th yours is the 6th of october okay all right well we Correct? will we will we'll, we'll look to to arrange that for the audience now um where can people go to find you to find out about this legislation uh to hear you speak on these topics in more detail so you know simon i've been laying low i did a an interview a year ago with dr whit during 
Clinton, who was an FDA officer and um, a professor of psychiatry in the US who has his license in several states. And he is very um, involved in deprescribing and ha helping people get off psychiatric medications. So I did an interview with him and it just says um, Dr. Whit During and Dr. Anna, and then across my face, it says censored. So that's on YouTube. So I am posting slowly. I'm going to try and just keep posting now, bearing in mind that everything, the whole, the content on Instagram has all been taken down. Okay. All right. Well, it would seem to me uh, sensible for you to develop uh, places on social media where uh, free speech is a little bit more valued. Uh, I would suggest to you um, sites like Rumble and, of course, Elon Musk's X. I'm on Twitter. I am on Twitter. And on Twitter, um, it is called. I had to close one of the accounts because the nonprofit threatened me for defamation. Um, but it's Anna, S Y L W E S, 94870 is what I'm using. All right. Well, I will put a link up to that in the chat. Well, thank you very much for your time, uh, uh, Dr. Silvestrovich. It is, has been a pleasure, and I'm just astonished to hear what you have had to say. Before we finish, is there anything else that you would like to tell us? Just that my family comes from communist Poland. My father was a doctor. His dad was a, a military doctor. And I can tell you that um, antipsychotic injections every one month, two months, three months, or every six months even, I believe Israel has a Q6 monthly injection, um, are bioweapons. This isn't mental health care. This is what's used to keep people quiet. And in Russia back in the 40s, 50s, people that were political opponents would be locked up and labeled soft schizophrenics. All right. So for this to be happening here in British Columbia is very disturbing. Wow. Okay. Well, thank you again for your time. And uh, I will look forward to having you, uh, hosting you again uh, on C Simon TV so that we can uh, dig into this some more. Thank you for joining me today. It has been a real pleasure, Dr. Anna. Thanks, Simon. Take care. Wow, everybody, what did you make of that? I think that was just astonishing. It is incredible to hear that people are being forcibly medicated in that manner inside a Western democracy. I want to dig into this issue uh, some more. I'm going to definitely get uh, Dr. Str uh, Silvestrovich uh, back on Simon TV, hopefully on one of my live shows uh, so that we can ask her some questions as an audience and dig into it. It's a broad topic. Uh, she's obviously the expert that we need to talk talk to about it. Thank you for joining me. This has been Simon TV. Bye-bye.